All right, this is I Hear I See Radio, episode 127. I think that's the right number. And you know, this is interesting. It's December 7th, 12 7, 127. Wow, that's quite the uh, <laughs> what a uh, serendipitous. Right, yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is the uh, 127th episode of this show. Used to be a show on KRUI, the radio station at the University of Iowa, where I would talk to local artists, play local music, stuff like that. And then the pandemic happened, and I never returned to the radio station. <laughs> and now it's it's an occasional thing I do with my friends. Uh, monthly now. I've been doing it monthly since July of this year. Sweet. Yeah, and it's, yeah. A, it's a feature on my more popular podcast. Yeah. Rock Hard Caucus. I've I'm merged, a huge fan. merged yeah. the two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, today we're recording this in uh, West Liberty. Yep. The name uh, the name I hear I see is it's about Iowa City. That's the I see. Uh, we're outside of Iowa City today. Last month's episode was in Indianapolis, Indiana. Okay. So much further away. <laughs> We've already broken the yeah. <laughs> gone beyond the boundaries of the city. It's the Midwest. Iowa yeah. City travels far. Yeah, we've never gone outside the Midwest with this. Yeah. So I think we're still keeping it within certain yeah. boundaries. <laughs> uh West Liberty for those of you who don't know is uh basically directly east of iowa city yeah about i don't know 25 30 miles or something uh yeah about that like 25 minute drive yeah maybe yeah. a little less mileage but yeah, yeah yeah uh so that makes it then southeast of north liberty yes so west liberty is southeast of north liberty <laughs> yeah and i think there's a liberty center somewhere that may be yeah i don't know that one extremely east or something i don't know it, liberty center so yeah you yeah, would think that that would be like in the middle yeah the middle of the state but i don't think it is it's further I'm, east okay i don't know my iowa geography great but no. there's a uh, there's so many small towns it's pretty wild yeah i know i know where cedar rapids is and yeah. iowa city and des moines <laughs> yeah and i kind of know where ames is yeah it's right by des moines <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyway uh the the man sitting across from me is dan miller dan good to see you good to see you justin welcome yeah. to the podcast yeah this thanks great. uh thanks for having me here in your facility uh we're at the vault in west liberty yeah yeah there's a there's a bank vault right over there uh <laughs> it still functions but i uh haven't locked it yet <laughs> yeah Just, I've, it's uh you yeah. haven't tested the lock no well the landlord knows the combination and he's like i'll give it to you you. (laughs) well he said he would but i was like i don't want it yeah i'll just i don't need to lock the vault (laughs) (laughs) so if yeah all right yeah you've had you've had a lot of people come in here it's good that nobody has like locked that (laughs) yeah yeah well it's actually funny the one time i was out here with my buddy kevin and uh it was the scariest I've ever been in a storm. Like the, the mm. windows in the front of the building were like flexing in and out. <laughs> the back door was whistling. Yeah. Yeah. And so we went into the vault to take some shelter. Um, and there's like little <laughs> mini doors that don't exactly lock. Oh, okay. But they got stuck for a sec. <laughs> so you thought you might so, be trapped in there. Yeah. I mean, we like, it was like a second. It was like, push the door. Didn't really budge. Yeah. Like, okay. Stay calm. <laughs> Push the door again. And then like, I think we had to like kick it open. Oh, but, wow. Yeah. So that was a lesson learned, you know. Yeah. Do you get like cell reception in there? Um, I think so. Okay. Yeah. I'm pretty okay. sure we had that. But, so you yeah. hopefully you could have yes. called someone. Yeah. 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 It would have been. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, a kind of defining feature of this room is it has huge front windows. Yeah. So to see those shaking in a storm, yeah, I'd be nervous. Yeah. Yeah. They were just like bowing in and out. Like it was obvious, like the air pressure was changing like (laughs) drastically, you know? Yeah. Um, Uh, So so how long have you been in here now? It'll be uh, two years in February. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking it's been almost two years, which seems crazy. It is crazy. I mean, like, yeah, it's, it's been a continuously evolving project, you mm-hmm. know, like I had it up and running and recording like the first day I moved in, mm-hmm. you know, uh, my friend Josh helped me out and we got it all set up and, uh, we're tracking stuff, but then, you know, that was just the basic setup. And then it's six months of working with that and realizing, Oh, this stuff doesn't work or right, kind of, yeah. it's, it's just continuously evolving. So yeah. I'd never really consider it like a fully built studio. It's just kind of always, 
yeah well, well, always two, trying to improve two years is like it's still very new right yeah yeah it yeah. seems like it might be a long time but you know yeah you're basically building a recording studio from nothing yes <laughs> yeah yeah and i mean i can't think like the iowa city music scene enough like so many like you know less than probably half of this stuff is mine mm-hmm. in here um just so many people are like hey do you want to hang on to this like yeah. i'm not going to use it if you're going to use it out here yeah you can have it yeah. and so like it's just really cool to be able to fill it out with the community's equipment yeah we're in a yeah. pretty uh big open room here i see a clavinova i see a little organ uh six guitars right there a seventh yeah. guitar there a bass uh a drum set uh, yeah there's just a lot yeah. of stuff there was another drum set in the vault and yeah oh, okay <laughs> so yeah right it's, it's been a few months since i came out here yeah it's yeah you've definitely gained a few <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it feels like it's year. you know filled with some more gear um, yeah so so what yeah. kind of stuff have you recorded out here um it's been kind of all sorts of stuff um Actually, the first thing I recorded was a band called It's Really Nice, mm-hmm. um, Cricket yeah, Stanzi. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, uh, back when I was at the radio station, I had one of their projects. This was like one of the last episodes I did there, mm-hmm. I think. Um, I want to say Astro Nights was okay. the name of the band that they were in nice. at the time. Yeah. yeah, I know there's been a few like <laughs> Trash Wizard and, um, but yeah, so it was, that was kind of what started it was just kind of doing some of that stuff for them. Um, and it was kind of more like, kind of like atmosphere, bluesy, maybe a little G Love special sauce kind mm-hmm. of hip hop, yeah, yeah, with live instrumentation. Um, and then you know my my band Maze is definitely a rock band, so yeah. I've done lots of rock bands. Yeah, um, that's Maze with three A's. That is for three anyone A's. Looking for them. Yeah, you guys have stuff on like Spotify, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah we're on all the streaming platforms. Yeah. Um, and so. You know, that's kind of the the music I'm most familiar with. So that's kind of what it's been a lot of. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, bands like Worst Impressions, Two Canes, um, Early Girl, um, Critical yeah. Mass. It's yeah. been been kind of skewed towards rock. Um, then I've also had some chance to do some like hardcore punk. Yeah, uh, uh, Boot Camp was in here. Yes, Boot right? Camp, PSYOP just released their album that was recorded, that was recorded here. here too. Cool. Yeah, so... Yeah. Um, well, speaking of early girl, uh, two months ago on this show, if anyone who's listening is like uh, has followed the series, we did play Evil Head okay. by Early Girl on the show two months ago. Gotcha. And that was recorded here. Yes. So, so if you are a person who has followed the series, you yeah. have heard music recorded here at the vault fairly recently. Uh, maybe we should play another one of these tracks that you gave me. What would be a good one to start with? I was kind of thinking the no touching theme. Okay. Um, so that was, oh, a, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was a video series that was done during the pandemic and yeah. your, your band performed on there. I did and, one of those. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so that was a really cool project that really made me appreciate just how diverse the music scene was here and yeah. feeling a, a real like duty to document it and draw awareness to it. Yeah, No Touching um, was a really cool series. I, that was Crystal's idea, right? Yeah, yeah. Crystal came to me and was like, all right, we we both worked at venues and it was all, you know, Everything shut down. was pretty dead, yeah. And like a month out, Crystal's like, hey, what if we did some like no audience concerts? And, yeah. Um, yeah, she did all the audio and producing and I did the video editing and um, I made the theme song when we would stream it on Facebook. Um, right. <laughs> it's kind of also related because for the longest time, like in high school, I got really into hip hop production, yeah. which is like a thing most people maybe don't know about me. But yeah, I, I, I don't. I guess I don't, I don't think we've talked about I that. I don't do it anymore. Yeah. You know, I kind of Were you like, into like FL Studio or something. Yeah, I had yeah. FL Studio. Yeah. I had Ableton. I had all the pirated stuff. Cool. I would just get <laughs> home from school and make a beat, you nice. know. Yeah. Um, and this one was one I kind of revisited some of that stuff during the pandemic where I didn't have people to play with. That makes so sense. I just kind of yeah. went back to, to hip hop production and I was just really proud of this one. And um, yeah. Yeah, we should listen to this and then we can uh, talk about talk about the music afterwards and then we should go back to you know you in high school and we should talk <laughs> yeah. about that yeah yeah <laughs> all right so here's the no touching theme music that dan made
Oh, it ends abruptly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was kind of just a song that would loop like while we were getting ready to stream the episodes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know. I just never got tired of hearing it like yeah, yeah. looping and it just brings back some nostalgia for that, that time when it was, it was a really rough time in the music <laughs> scene, but mm-hmm. like it felt good to still like, you know, friends were just tuning in and watching stuff and like it was. Right. Yeah. It, it was. A lot easier to get people to, to pay attention to stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For, for those few yeah, months. <laughs> yeah. It felt really cool. So, <laughs> yeah, that's a nice, it's a nice little chill, like short loop. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, the synth stuff is definitely very, like, you know, early 90s rap mm-hmm. kind of Dr. Dre production. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I definitely get down with some G Funk and West Coast. Like, yeah. Yeah. It was a. Growing up in Cedar Rapids, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, pretty heavy, you know, yeah. hip hop scene. Yep, up there. Yeah, uh, yeah. That No Touching series was really cool because Crystal knows like everyone in town. You know, yeah, being the the Gabe's person. So yeah, I think we did a, like thirty some episodes, yeah. and it was just like it was just kind of mind blowing. And like you know, we shoot like maybe two or three kind of in a row separately you right, know yeah. and like and we would kind of have the premieres be like a show like there's an opener and a headliner and like yeah it was oh, it wasn't yeah, just right, like right. one episode a week necessarily sometimes it was yeah. like two or three it was like you booked <laughs> you, you yeah. booked a show yeah. yeah so yeah and there was a huge variety of stuff because again she knows everyone in town <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah yep Chris yeah, is that, amazing. that one that that we did um that was like april of 2021 i think that we recorded that Mm -hmm. and i was like into like a obviously from the pandemic a huge like depressive era yeah but uh yeah also just like personally just like the past like six months before that i was like i can't do anything Mm -hmm. (laughs) and so she kind of like brought me out of like a very dark hole to do that video Mm mm-hmm that was great yeah 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 Yeah. i'm very happy that that exists i think that was we did like the first season was pretty much all solo or duo i believe and then yeah the second season you know things in the pandemic were starting to look kind of better maybe yeah so we were doing some some bands yeah Yeah. yep yeah so yeah and i put together a group like specifically for that and then we recorded uh an album together later yeah, so that, yeah, that yeah. kickstarted some good stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then yeah. Uh, half the band moved away, uh-huh. which is how it always is for me. Yeah, that's Iowa in City. Iowa City. Yep. yep. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's go back to you uh, in high school, FL mm-hmm. Studio, pirated Ableton. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you grew up in Cedar Rapids, as yes. did I. Yep. But we did not know each other at the time. No. You graduated high school in '09, right? 2010. 2010. So, oh, yeah. two years after yeah. me. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking '09. Yeah. But you went to Kennedy. I went to Kennedy. You went to Wash. Right. Yeah. And people from those schools never cross paths. (laughs) Not really. Yeah. But what uh, what kind of stuff were you doing like in school? um, Honestly, I was just kind of all over the place. Uh, I did do like athletics, like I did track and football and stuff. Okay. Um, And uh, yeah, I was, I always just tried to like not be in a clique like i tried mm. to just be friends with everyone okay yeah yeah you know how high school is <laughs> kind of clicky so i was just trying to hang out with people i liked and uh you know music had always been a thing throughout my life um and yeah it was just kind of like i had a band in middle school with uh my buddy lars and ian and uh you know once high school hit we kind of all just high school just changes you know a little thing you know everyone's like you know someone does show choir someone does sports and oh it's like you're you too get, busy like, with you get roped yeah. into these activities and then those activities have these certain social circles but mm. um we still did play some music as a band uh, a few times in high school yeah but yeah majority of high school was spent kind of solo producing um yeah learning midi and learning how to sample at one point, I bought a MPC 2000. Oh, really? Yeah. So it used a floppy disk, and you could like sample like up to like a minute, you know. But yeah. then you'd like be able to slow down the sample to get right, more yeah. time. And That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, eventually, the screen broke, and I sold it. But yeah, it was uh, just kind of I was really deep into it for a while, and I think once I got into college, I really craved like playing live again right right so 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 really it was middle school when you were like a rock and roll guy yeah yeah of course i mean i was into like you know all the classic rock and yeah 
um, new metal. Okay, I, I wasn't super into new metal at the time, like when it was actually relevant you know yeah i like to think i liked the new metal that still stands up like uh, you're a deftones guy yeah de- <laughs> deftones system of a down yeah they're you great know, yeah. Uh, yeah rage i guess i don't know yeah. if that's new metal but mm, yeah i mean i think a lot of people yeah. consider that to be I, like early new metal never got into limp biscuit yeah or, you know some of that stuff i but. yeah i wasn't really into that at the time i kind of have a soft spot for them now yeah 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 or Lincoln Park, I, I really liked their first album, and yeah, I think everyone, that one. yeah, yeah, they were huge, <laughs> yeah. So, and just growing up, I mean, you know, like Rock One Hundred Eight, and oh, of uh, course, KRNA. we know the same, uh, yeah, the so same it's like, radio station. So yeah. we grew up listening yeah. to like you know the Offspring and <laughs> yeah. all that stuff. So. <laughs> were you ever into Guns N' Roses? They were like, yeah, for me. yeah. I thought yeah. Slash was pretty cool yeah. when I was in middle school. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to play a Les Paul. And, oh, of yeah. course, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was a uh, Slash for Halloween um, freshman year of high school. Yeah, yeah. Like I can't that. remember. Maybe it was like Ooh, a. V- I just realized that that could have been very problematic because <laughs> he's half black. But I did. Oh, I did not no, you do anything. Do. Yeah. <laughs> I just, you just wore, wore a hat. And a wig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember Slash. Like I think it was a VH1 documentary. He like talks about how he died for like ten minutes. Oh wow! Yeah. And it was just like, I'm sure I, just I watched that too. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, whoa, this guy's that's crazy. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's rock and roll, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm glad that I I didn't like you know despite like kind of idolizing those kind of guys, I didn't really emulate their lifestyle ever. Yeah. And w- I easily could have, you know, Cedar mm-hmm. Rapids, Iowa, crazy place. <laughs> yeah, yep. And I also got to give prop to like my friends, like older siblings. Like I'm the oldest sibling, so I didn't have yeah. any older brother or sister to like show me the cool music, it was right, just kind of yeah. what I could find on the radio or yeah, same Tony I'm, Hawk Pro Skater soundtrack. Yes, that that was it. Like you know? the Tony Hawk soundtracks were like huge for yeah. spreading like cool music. Yeah, um, ska mostly. But yeah, like you know, I had a friend's older sister that was super into Nirvana and stuff, and like that introduced me to that and um, other friends that had, you know listened to hip hop and Snoop Dogg and all that G funk stuff. So yeah. yeah, really, like my closest friends, we were all the oldest siblings. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I was like, you know, stealing my dad's tapes and stuff. Yeah. So you're going a little further back. Than like, <laughs> right. Yeah. Like a... Yeah. And then, uh, my friend Jake, he would like burn CDs for me. So yeah. I got, I got a lot of Led Zeppelin from him. Nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> after, so you said after high school, you got back into more like live. Playing yeah. Stuff. Yeah. I had some, some roommates that played and, uh, eventually like, I think my sophomore year, we got like a little jam space set up and we're just jamming, learning covers, writing some originals, but yeah. you know, not, nothing like very serious. We weren't like playing gigs or, you know, okay. trying to like be a band necessarily. Yeah. Just, just, uh, just chill. fun stuff. Yeah. You know? So I know you're in maze now. Yep. Again, maze with three A's. Yep. Where does that come from? Um, so there's a great like soul funk band called maze with one a, Mm -hmm. so that was already taken. Um, and then I think we just liked the weirdness of how it looked like spelled out. Yeah. Uh, another thing is the, the members are Dan, Lars and Pat. So the common letter in all of our names is a, yeah. Yeah. So maybe that's three. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Makes sense. Yeah. (laughs) And before that, I knew your band, Doc Miller. Yes. Right? Yep. Yep. That was kind of, of what evolved into Maze. Okay. That's um, what I thought. It yeah. was sort of a previous iteration. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was kind of, when I had moved to Iowa City, I really started writing originals, starting go, going to like the uh, open mic at Yacht Club and stuff that yeah. Kane hosted and um, just started to try to like perform and write a little bit more. Um because there's there's a lot of opportunities in Iowa City when I yeah. moved here, so yeah, yeah, um, yeah it was uh, really cool. What else? What other bands? You're a, you play guitar with Lou Sherry. Yes, I know that. Lou Sherry is the other band right now. That is it for the moment. Okay, um, there <laughs> it's was not enough bands, Dan. <laughs> well, uh, my friends had an intervention for me joining <laughs> bands a few years ago, so it it, it uh. I wish I could just be in every band I want to be in, yeah. but um, yeah, I realized quickly that I don't have the the time or mental stamina to 
to try to do all that. Yeah, you got to get into music that doesn't require any practice at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's like okay, if you want to, like, if you just tell me what to play, and I can, we can practice once and play a show. I could probably do that. Yeah, but, you know, <laughs> like I did do last Halloween. I played bass in a Strokes tribute. Uh, oh, okay. Which has now also evolved into a new band called Cactus Five. I'm really oh, okay. excited about yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but you're you're not. Not in Cactus, in Cactus Five. No, no, <laughs> okay. no. They they got it filled out. But <laughs> I did play with them and like got really into the Strokes. We did "Is This It" in nice. its entirety. So. Oh, awesome! Yeah, cool. Was that a Halloween show? Yes. Yeah. Uh, was that here? It was at Trumpet Blossom last year. Okay. Yeah. I, I think there was actually that was early girls first show maybe was that their first show yeah okay because it was tomato boy as aaron solo and right i think they right. did uh was it a saint i think they did a saint vincent tribute that was okay. really cool yeah so, i missed that show there's yeah. so many shows that i miss yeah i mean it's like most of them <laughs> it's it's hard especially when you like you know do sound or work in the right, business we're, we're working somewhere else yeah whatever shows happen. yeah yeah like, i'll have to like really like put them in my calendar and be like all right i need to yeah. take off work because i need to right. go to this <laughs> right. you know i need to not get paid for a yeah. night and go to a show instead. yeah yeah, yeah. It's, yeah it's a weird trade-off <laughs> it is but then you're getting paid to be at a show so <laughs> yeah that's also you know nice. yeah, yeah yeah if you play your cards the show right, is good yeah yeah <laughs> if you play your cards right yeah. <laughs> uh okay we mentioned lou sherry a minute ago yes and i really like the sound of lou sherry there's yeah. sort of a relaxed sort of feeling to it yeah uh, it's so it's really different than like you know what you'd expect because denny was in a band called Zool, which was like mm-hmm. super heavy right yeah maze is pretty heavy and like yeah it's just got this you know piano based sound that's really easy to listen to yeah and speaking of listening to it i think we're gonna do that now uh dan provided me with some tracks to play uh while we're talking here and all these were recorded here at the vault well maybe not the no touching because that was before you had the yes that was that was at the old place uh, in iowa city um and same with the the maze track I, I showed okay. you, but yeah, this one was done at the vault. It's okay. one of the first projects done here. All right, so this Lou Sherry track was recorded here at the vault. It's called Friendly Advisors, and this is from the uh, album More Now Than Then, right? Yes. Cool. All right, here it is. Stay. 
big idea Maybe you're just crazy Advice gets you angry Pull, pull yourself together Sherry, Friendly Advisors, the first track from More Now Than Then, recorded here at The Vault in West Liberty, Iowa. So I'm looking at the album now on Bandcamp. Yeah. I still, I, uh, I, uh, I'm sorry to say, but I still haven't listened to the whole thing. Yeah, it's, it's great. <laughs> I mean, it's, I think it's a little less than 30 minute runtime. So yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I think, uh, Denny Richards is the main kind of songwriter. Right. Right. Um, of Lou Sherry and um, he's just such a masterful arranger and um, really thinks about how an album flows yeah. which I think is kind of a lost art these days of yeah yeah album you know, oriented music yeah, yeah. people yeah. don't people don't conceive of things as albums much anymore no music no. wise I mean at this at this point it's like 30 second TikToks and stuff <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. like so <laughs> yeah long form people don't have the patience for anymore no, but i get it too man it's, it's too hard much competition it's hard. for your attention yeah yeah it's, it's really hard yeah technology these days <laughs> so many distractions we're getting old yeah you know yeah we are <laughs> it's it's pretty wild <laughs> uh so i'm looking at the the band camp page for lou sherry i really like how that opens by the way just the beginning of the whole album it's like it sounds like you guys are just like ch- yeah chilling like about to practice or something and then suddenly the yep. song is like yeah. full power <laughs> yeah it was a little false start and that actually happened during that take and yeah i'm just like i thought it was really cool yeah like it's a, a little, great way a to quick open. little sound check yeah it's awesome <laughs> yeah so that's uh, something i really like about recording actually is just yeah. kind of capturing these behind the scene moments that kind of can make their way make their right, way yeah. in um yeah and it just kind of makes it a little more special yeah it's know? good to have that mindset of like um I'm capturing a moment. I'm not necessarily trying to like execute exactly what this track is going to be. Yeah. You know, <laughs> got to have some openness. Yes. Allow, yeah. allow the, uh, the, I don't know. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess just like the song, you know, like I, I think like every song can be like a universe and you have to like, you have to be in that universe when you're making the song and then like, when someone hears it, they'll, they'll, they'll go there, you know, yeah, yeah. it's, it's a, yeah. it's a space in your mind. That, and universes are not like a static thing. Yeah. They evolve. Yes. Right. Yeah. You got to yeah. let it open up. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Listen to it, you know, multiple times and yeah, just. So that's a uh, Danny Richards on the keys and vocals. Yep. Uh, you play guitar josh seligman on drums am i yep. saying his last name right yes good yep, i never have to actually say it <laughs> <Yeah>. so I, <laughs> yep. and uh john lewis on the bass yeah yeah i saw you guys play live at the trumpet blossom a few months ago yeah maybe it might have been all the way back in the summer or spring of this year yeah um i'm trying to think was that was that the show with brad span nature boys i or? don't believe so okay it was maybe before that then <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys haven't played a ton of shows together, right? As, yeah. as Lou Sherry, um, it's it's been a decent amount. Like we did the Ped Mall in the fall. Oh, that's right. Yeah, um, and that's yeah. kind of was sorry, coincided. I with, that. No, yeah. that's okay. Yeah, that was kind of like coincided with the the album or the EP release. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we actually have a show coming up Friday. I don't know when this airs, but I'll probably I might get this out tonight. Yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> All right. So yeah, Friday with Half Loves and uh, Jim Swim at Gabe's. So. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah. even know that was happening. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. I'll yeah, I'll put a link to that event 
Cool. I will definitely put the episode out tonight then. Nice. Just to make All sure. Right. Yeah, otherwise it could be like, oh, you missed an awesome show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the tags on the band camp here are interesting. Uh, yeah. Lounge and psych, I think, are the best combo of words there. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a really, really unique sound, I think. Um, you know, I think especially that first track just has kind of this classic kind of songwriter you know show tuny kind yeah, of feel yeah. to it um, yeah that groove is like from something specific yeah 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 uh, frankie valley yeah yeah yep yeah <laughs> yep yeah so that was kind of a reference there and um yeah i think just like kind of adding this kind of oddball twist on it you yeah know? um <laughs> And then the second track, Dice, is just really kind of spacey and slow. Um, I noticed it's eight minutes long. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then there's one of my favorites is Busy, and that's kind of like a circus song. Oh, nice. You know, it's yeah. kind of something someone would like walk on a tightrope and yeah. swing from uh, acrobatic <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Got a calliope yeah. in there? <laughs> yeah, no, no calliope, but there's a honky-tonk piano. Nice, so. yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, speaking of circus, I think the first thing that I ever recorded in here was for Ellie's album. Yes. The, yeah. Uh, e- Wait, what's the name of that album? Ego something. Ego Party. Party. Ego yeah. Party. Yeah. yeah. And that track was Effortless, right? Effortless. Yeah. yeah. She wanted yeah. some chaos circus to yeah. be in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. That was kind of the first, like, having a bunch of people in here, you know, it had been like, you know three or four piece bands and then right. all of a sudden got like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ellie commissioned the, uh, the, uh, Christine Burke ensemble yeah. for some, yep. to add some like just acoustic instrumental noise. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. that would have been probably eight people in here. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a lot of fun. We did some weird stuff. <laughs> I think there was some stomping around and, or was that, that it, might it, not have been that one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We've recorded a few other, uh, Lex Leto, Christine Burke, uh, collabs yeah. in here. Yeah. Yeah. It's always fun. Just like throwing out the rule book and <laughs> yeah. seeing, seeing what we can do with the space. So yeah, that's been interesting. I don't know when that is going to be completed. Yeah. That album we've been working on for a long time, but yeah, it's been, it's like, a part of the process is like figuring out how to how to even record these pieces yeah because they were conceived very very much as like live performance and like spatially you know Mm -hmm. like that uh the fly i think that's one where we stomped in here yeah okay yep but the way that that piece ends when we play it live is we're all like we walk away from the stage yeah so we're all over the place Mm -hmm. so how do you replicate that yeah have to have to learn how to do uh, Dolby Atmos mixes. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to add more channels. Yeah, I think. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good like next step for you is to just. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've like everyone's been talking about Dolby Atmos, and um, it's it's interesting because there's like these little sound bars that can simulate it. Or yeah, like but a, how do you simulate that with I, just a bar? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, I don't think it's like the real deal. Like you probably need to drop like five grand on a sound system to have like a real Dolby Atmos setup. Right. But And that wouldn't even be a good one probably. Yeah. yeah. And if anyone's not familiar with Dolby Atmos, it's like very three, it's like even more 3D than surround sound. Right. Yeah. Um, surround sound is six channels yeah. if you include the sub. Yeah. And then Atmos is like... 11 or something yeah i think it can be anywhere from like 11 to like 50 like oh, it's wow. like you can just keep adding spots oh okay like, yeah. is that part of the conception i think so yeah you just keep adding <laughs> i don't know it's like it's it's a cool cool idea so yeah but when i was in indianapolis i was at uh it, wait what's the name of the school <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the, uh, well, it's it's a weird school because oh, it's like a combination of two universities. They yeah. have a campus in Indianapolis. Okay. The full name of the school is Indiana University, Purdue University of Indiana. Nice. <laughs> <Okay>. Just so <laughs> my, you know. <laughs> my friend Jason works there. Mm-hmm. And he showed me a room where they had like an Atmos setup. And it's just like just walls covered in speakers. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. I'd love to see something like that. Yeah. Uh, I've just seen pictures and... Uh, a lot of people are talking about it now, but we'll see if anything happens yeah. of it. In but, a few years, it'll be the home But for standard. something like the C- Christine Burke Ensemble, it would be, a, I think, a really cool application for that because yeah. you can 
you can move things around three dimensionally. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Once we actually, you know, put out a completed product, maybe we could apply for another grant. Yeah. <laughs> to, yeah. To, the to go in that mix, direction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but as of now, I think we have to finish what we yeah. started yeah. with the money we've already been granted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's really cool too. The, um, I think, uh, ego party was actually a grant funded yeah, album too. It was, so, yeah. Um, it's just really cool that the state has that resource for local artists to, to make an album, you know, the way they yeah. want to. Yeah. Iowa arts council for yes. people who don't know and need some money to, yeah. <laughs> to make a, yeah. a rock album. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Check it out. They've, I've known several people who've got money through that. Yep. What other stuff have you worked on in here? Like recently? Uh, one of the most exciting projects I've been working on with, um, is a actual rock opera called, uh, Monty and the or the continuing misery of Monty Montague um <laughs> and uh yeah my friend Keenan's been he's kind of been the mastermind it's yeah I think it's like two hour runtime okay and a lot of it had already kind of been recorded over the past three years yeah um he's had like over I think 150 <laughs> musicians on this that's awesome um and so I've just kind of we've tracked some, some things here for it um and then we've done some mixing and I think there's like the first chapter is hopefully being released here in the next month or so. Um, and that's uh, like the whole thing is two hours, not the first chapter is two hours. Yeah. The whole thing's two hours. This okay. is just a okay. small, like, gotcha. yeah, 15 minute <laughs> snippet. Cause okay. yeah, I think it's, you know, it's a very, very big project yeah. uh, and it's, it's really cool. It's a very like kind of dystopian, uh, you know, the, christian fascists have taken over and, okay uh rock and roll will <laughs> you know <laughs> fight them and it's nice. a, it's a really kind of cool story and i still haven't listened to it all the way through i've just kind of you know yeah. this first chapter i've finally been able to kind of like get an idea of how it rolls it's, it's really good cool so, i yeah. yeah i had not heard about that that's very cool yeah yep it's uh it'll be be really cool when it's yeah. all who's uh who's keenan uh keenan daly he okay. um he's pretty involved in the scene he'll hang out at gabe's and come to the the variety shows and uh, okay. he actually drums in a band called airspace okay they also recorded some stuff here they recorded drums here for their album um cool so yeah, yeah. i don't think i've met him but i'm sure we've been in the same room at some yeah. point yeah so that was a really cool one and then uh shining realm has mm-hmm. been working on some stuff yeah and that's, i think i've seen videos of that happening yeah in there. they're like a nine piece band if you're not familiar <laughs> yeah. and they have you know a couple of different ox percussion session sections um some cool like world instruments like a a zaz it's like a turkish kind of lute type okay. thing yeah it's the first time i've ever recorded a zaz and yeah you know it's how's that spelled do you know s-a-z s-a-z okay yeah. cool yeah yeah so i know I, like there's so many just like various stringed instruments yeah. from around the world that are all like one percent different from each other yeah 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 it's <laughs> yeah um so that was cool and that was like you know that was nine people in using all the cables and microphones i could <laughs> possibly use yeah and like you know it's it's uh it's really fun to to hear it come together too because it's just such a big sound um and there's a lot of sp- a lot of space in here like there's yeah. 16 foot ceiling right. so i think yeah, that yeah. kind of shows through. a lot of cool big reverb in here big reverb yeah. and there's like kind of this like live in the room sound um that i think a lot of classic recordings had yeah uh, whereas the modern studios kind of go for everything isolated right. and you yeah. know super clean but that's kind of what I was thinking when you were talking about, you know, nine people in here, every microphone going, there's, there's going to be a ton of bleed. I would think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's, it, it kind of works, you know, right. it just it makes it gives everything a little bit of cohesiveness, you know? Right. There's a certain feeling of just like, you know, actually all, everything happening at the same time in the same space. Yes. It's hard to make something sound that way if you're not actually doing it that yes. way. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, um, heard this awesome interview with a uh, Krongbin. Uh, they're like a, uh, instrumental band from Texas. They do a little bit like world influenced kind yeah. of funk music. What's and the name again? Krongbin. It's Krongbin. like, yeah, it's okay. like, it's a uh, tie for airplane. Okay, cool. Yeah. It's like K H R A U G H B I N or something. Yeah. yeah. Krongbin. Yeah. 
yeah, um, <laughs> something like that. And yeah. they they were talking about they were, were recording their albums in this barn, mm-hmm. and they tried to go into the studio, and like it just didn't. They realized they were missing the sound of the barn, so they actually went back to the barn and made an impulse response, which oh, is like yeah, a, yeah. a simulation of the room reverb. Right. And then they ended up like uh, putting that on the album they recorded in the studio <laughs> so they could get that barn sound. Yeah. You know, it's just like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, why not just record in the barn at that point? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what they're doing now. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just kind of... Yeah. Yeah, it's something... Yeah, I remember reading like Frank Zappa interviews where he would talk about that. It's like trying to capture the specific sound of specific rooms. Yeah. From all over. Yeah, and I'm not super into like the the modern like metal and gent stuff, but someone had told me that's kind of like where the drumming has gone with that kind of metal music. It's mm. it's about like finding a really cool room for the drums mm. and stuff rather than yeah, I don't know. If anyone knows metal, reach out, let me know because I, I was really curious when someone mentioned it to me. Yeah. Like, we're not going to worry about the mics or like it's it's more just the room that's like driving the sound. I guess interesting. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, if you're out there, Dan has uh, an old bank vault with the drum set in it. If you would like to try that out, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, some of the Lou Sherry stuff, uh, Denny did vocals in the vault. Mm, nice. And that was when I kind of realized it wouldn't work as like a vocal booth because <laughs> you're not feeling the most inspired locked in a vault. There's not, <laughs> there is a small air vent, but it gets hot and probably low on oxygen when you're belting right, vocals. Yeah, yeah kind of hard to sing. Yeah. So it's just been storage for now. Maybe it'll evolve into something else someday. But yeah. It's a, it's a if, cool feature. If you go in there, keep in mind, Dan does not have the combination to the lock. So yeah. be careful. It's, it's locked open right now so right. we're good but yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah something i was going to say about denny's vocals on lou sherry i told him this when i saw you guys play at trumpet blossom but i i'm very impressed with like the way that he keeps his melodic performance like very relaxed it's mm-hmm. like pretty low yeah in his range and it's like well, you said belting, but what I've no, heard is yeah, not, he's not, not belting. been very much yeah, no, belting. No, yeah, no, no. So. And then the way that he arranges like the instrumental parts, you would think, you know, if you're singing like that, it's very easy to get buried. Yeah. But when I saw you guys live, it was like the balance was so good. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of uh, a little surprised by that, but I think it's really interesting because Denny plays piano like all, like he could play on like a 25 key, you know, <laughs> yeah. like it's just it's kind just of all right like, in the middle. Like, yeah. yeah. So I think like the the piano is occupying this very specific spot. Most of my guitar is like really up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think maybe the vocals kind of fit between the the piano right. and guitar real nice. Yeah, um, you left some space for them. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So that's the way to do it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's 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 kind of like whack a mole. I've learned. You know, <laughs> it's like all these elements that you're trying to balance and yeah, right. One yeah. thing pops out all of a sudden, and yeah, then that causes another thing to pop out, and just do that until you <laughs> yeah we could talk about uh mixing process for the next hour maybe <laughs> yeah yeah we won't get into that too much but <laughs> yeah well maybe we should you know even though i've already played this on the show before we should listen to this uh early girl song yeah yeah let's evil do head it. this is so, one that you you recorded here but you didn't have any part in like the writing process of this i did not have any part in the writing i just did the yeah the recording and mixing and right. then um i think aaron's friend in minneapolis did the mastering cool so yeah you know. And you didn't play on this either. No. Yeah. Nope. This is but, the first one we've heard that you didn't yeah. play on also. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so this is Early Girl. The song's called Evil Head. If you listen to the episode from two months ago with Jerosha Guamna, we already <laughs> listened to it, but it's nice. a great song, so no reason not to hear it again. <laughs> Why are you torturing me like this? Why? <laughs> Don't pretend that I don't know 
was early girl with evil head recorded here at the vault yep that was a little that cool in there was a little <laughs> that was another little happy you know behind yeah. the scenes thing so yeah it's a good <laughs> way gotta, to add. gotta add those easter eggs it's my <laughs> little it's my touch yeah <laughs> yeah so dan was in charge of recording that and mixing it afterwards also uh you feel like you learned anything in that process yeah i mean i think um the most fun I had was just working with Aaron and doing like all the like automation and like there was like a lot of like panning of guitars and like vocal effects coming in and out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. And that's kind of like the did, real. So did you like work together mixing that in the same room? Okay. Yeah, 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 cool. yeah. So um, it's just that's like kind of the funnest part of the process for me is all these like small details that people don't consciously pick up, but like subconsciously right send yeah. it to another level so <laughs> right, it's like yeah. yeah yeah if you're trying to mix i can't recommend that enough is start learning automation and mm -hmm. yeah. playing with effects what kind of software do you use here so i i use a product called reason studios uh -huh. um yeah it's it was actually originally meant just for making beats like right, that's what yeah. i learned on in high school um after yeah I did a little bit with Reason in college. Yeah, like all the synth stuff they have. In there. Yeah, yeah. The instruments are great. Um, the The layout is just super user friendly. Um, it's kind of like mimics a lot of analog gear. Right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it has limitations. I'm kind of trying to learn Pro Tools at the moment, but mm. that's a whole another beast. <laughs> um, and it's a very expensive beast. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, so I just kind of I've, I've been using Reason for like a decade, so yeah. I can pretty much do everything yeah that's that's another conversation we could get yeah. into like industry standards do they matter <laughs> no yeah i i don't think anyone listens to a song and be like oh was this made on pro tools right. <laughs> but yeah uh, i was i really like the sound of the vocals on that track yeah yep. you, like what did you use to like distort a little yeah. bit yeah so there's this really cool plugin called pulverizer that i use a lot and it's just kind of a compressor distortion it's mm -hmm. got a bunch of weird stuff it's yeah yeah um, pulverizer yeah All yep right. so <laughs> yeah sounds good yeah so something that uh i've noticed while we've been recording this a lot of people <laughs> drive past here <laughs> yeah yeah and that's like uh there's it's we're right on the main strip of west liberty mm -hmm. a block down the street is west liberty foods mm -hmm. and they make most of the lunch meat for subway oh okay so there's all sorts of trucks yeah <laughs> passing and the, the subway is just right over there so. yeah yeah it's the <laughs> freshest subway you'll ever eat at that's interesting i didn't realize that they they made the subway food yeah yep and like if you get like a cold cut from subway like it's all turkey like even the like the ham is actually turkey like it's nice yeah so 
Um, so if, you, if you're out there you're looking for the best Subway in the country, yeah. which I know a lot of people <laughs> love Subway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, eat fresh. <laughs> um, uh, the one right here, right down the street, yep. West Liberty Subway. But yeah, so, it, and that was like, when we first opened this, I was kind of like really trepidatious because I was like, okay, we, there's a recording studio right downtown. It's going to be loud. Mm-hmm. I mean, there is, there's two brick buildings and brick walls on both sides of us, but yeah. Um, yeah, I was really nervous that it, it was going to get shut down like right away. <laughs> um, the cafe next door, I'm I'm friends with, and they're okay with the noise. And yeah. talk to the neighbors; no one's ever complained. So it's That's been good. really cool. But yeah, the opposite problem: the city is too <laughs> loud for the studio. Right. <laughs> um, so it's been a challenge to try to record like some acoustic stuff in this live room here mm-hmm. with with a rock band and drums and amps. It's really never been an issue. Right. Um, but yeah. I have a smaller room in the back that's a lot more like sound dead, less street noise that right, I'll use right. for, for vocals or s- quieter sources. Um, hopefully within the next month or two, there's going to be double pane windows installed, which will really cut down the, right, yeah. the, the bleed from the street. Yeah. Right now it's uh yeah, it's just plywood. A ton of plywood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As I say, it's always evolving. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I know that you've uh you've hosted a couple of shows here, live shows. Yeah. Is that something that you want to keep doing? Yeah, so my plan is to do quarterly shows. Um Matt Prince from Gunk Lung got me on the quarter system. <laughs> I feel like a I'm a business major now, but it, it makes a lot of sense. I'd recommend thinking about things quarterly or I, seasonally, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I almost did that. Yeah. With the So I hear I say used to be a, you know, a monthly live show. Yeah. And we did one in February that I paid you to record. Yes, yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. I was going to do a quarterly this year. And yeah. then that was the last one I did. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I think we... So we did one this summer that was just actually supposed to be at Gabe's and it got double booked. Mm. And so we moved it out here. Um, and that was just kind of like wasn't even planned. It just kind of happened. But I was like, okay, we'll see how it goes. And yeah. It went really well. And then we did a Halloween show. I think I'm starting to put together a plan for a two year anniversary show oh, nice. sometime in February. So cool. yeah. stay posted for that. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah, I mean we're nearing uh we're nearing the end of an hour here, so yeah. you got any other events coming up that people should know about? You got Hello. the show tomorrow, right? Yep, got the show tomorrow. Um I think that's about it. It's gonna be kind of a lull. I know Maze is trying to work on some new material this winter out here, so got some stuff going on. But yeah. Well, how can people, if they want to record something here, like what should they do? Um, yeah. So right now it's kind of just, I haven't been too pr- promoting it too heavily. There is an Instagram page, yeah. uh, the vault recording IA. Um, so you can follow there. Um, you can shoot me a message there. You could also email me. I got to double check the email. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one sec. Yeah, the vault Iowa at Gmail. Okay, yeah, so the I, email is the vault Iowa. The Instagram is the vault recording IA. Yes. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yep. So similar, but not the same. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's it's hard to come up with usernames, <laughs> and you don't want them all to be the same because that's boring. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, but yeah, no, that's cool. One thing I wanted to ask you about was yeah. Uh, so I don't know if you knew this, but like my first sound job was at yacht club oh really yeah and was that was that your first gig uh, or had you no done? i my first job like running sound was with the cedar rapids municipal band gotcha so that's okay. that's very different it's outdoor yeah, yeah, but it's you, all acoustic you know yeah. um my first like venue gig i don't know I, I was doing a bunch of like diy stuff you know yeah. so i don't i yeah. don't know when i first like started getting paid to do it yeah yeah but yeah i just wanted to bring up yacht club because that place mm. was so cool and, yeah yeah it was um, uh it was an interesting little basement <laughs> yeah i mean i think like there's something to the basement venues like i don't know if you're uh like the beatles like we're playing this club called the cavern in oh, liverpool really? and it was that's like, like how they started yeah it sounds yeah. like it never been there but i've looked at pictures it kind of looks like the yacht club like just mm. like a brick <laughs> basement dungeon but like it, i think like there's something to those kind of venues um yeah, I, it's, it's it's like harder to escape, maybe you know, like 
like Gabe's is so easy to just like walk away and it's right. like a basement venue. You have to go down there and like be there. Right. Right. Unless you, you know, yeah. Like if you, if you go to a show upstairs at Gabe's to get away, it's downstairs, yes. which is easy. Yes. But to get away from the yacht club, it was upstairs. Yes. It's more effort to leave. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, a lot of I, great memories of that place. Yeah, yeah. I was always very comfortable in that room. Like it just, yeah. Like, I felt uh, like a good spot. The history of it as like a, a a morgue too, really. Oh, I don't think I even knew that. Yeah, I mean, it was a funeral home originally, the building, and oh. I'm pretty sure the basement was the morgue. Okay, so we were so, surrounded by ghosts. Yeah, there. and I think like that, like, you know, I don't know. I don't... I don't know what to think about it, but there's got to be something there, you know, yeah, like yeah. there's, there's a certain history to it. Right. That Surrounding you. Yeah. There. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me, yeah. let me plug one thing since I'm putting this episode out tonight. Yeah. I'm playing in Des Moines on Saturday. Oh yeah. With Haploid. With Haploid. December 9th. Band. They're so good. Yes. Yeah. Were you at Super that cool. show at Gabe's a few months ago? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yep. I thought I talked to you there. Yeah. 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 They are so good live yeah and i get to play with them that's awesome saturday night at wish X, i could make it <laughs> yeah at uh, xbk in des moines uh it's also i mean there's a bunch of other guests playing with them and there's also the bands tires and zaptura are also on the bill cool so that'll be fun awesome go check it out and we we always close with music on these so Sweet. uh this other one is maze right yes so this track, yeah this was actually recorded not here um but this was actually one of the first songs i ever wrote mm. as it was a doc miller song originally yeah and uh yeah a lot of people like it so yeah it's it's a it's a long burn but good one to close <laughs> with so is the song called only a memory yes okay yeah the numbers you could ignore oh also, so those don't yeah. mean anything yeah. no, all right that was, <laughs> this, i'll tell the listeners the track is only a memory 1648 but yeah. <laughs> the numbers mean nothing that, that would be the bit rate and sample rates so, okay. <laughs> or bit depth and sample rate gotcha. yeah 16 if anyone wants 48. to know what quality audio we're yeah. listening on yeah <laughs> although the product that you're hearing is going to be the mp3 which is not yeah. quite as good as this but. <laughs> all right so we're closing with some maze music go check them out on all the streaming services that's maze with three a's thank yes. you dan for talking to me today yes. it's great being on the show justin good to be here in the vault yeah and uh come check it out it's a it's a bit of a drive from iowa city but there's plenty of reasons to come out here the quarterly live show for example yes there's great uh ethnic food so oh yeah there's other stuff besides yeah. the vault yeah. around here yeah it's awesome <laughs> yeah all right well thanks for listening everybody here is maze with only a memory Sorry.
lightning strikes 